Cali cat, she is a lot like you. She's wondering about what math can do. Come on along. Come on along. Come on along. Cali's going on the map path, swinging into action. Come on along. Cali's going on the map path, patterns and subtraction. Come on along. Cali's going on the map path, fractions and addition. Come on. Aren't you going to chase me? Nah, I'm too busy counting. Aw, uh, but what fun is that? What fun is that? Let me tell you all of the things that numbers can do. Who are you? I'm Pop the Math Explorer, and I'll lead you on a journey to discover number power in a math world full of learning. You'll learn fractions, measurement, multiplication, and addition. You will journey through 10 math land, and you'll meet the math magician. Wow, let's go. I want to find the math magician. How do we get there? Here's your map. Now follow me. <gasps> and click on me whenever you want to see your journey options. All right. Let's go! I'll come too. I can help. Hello, everybody! My name is Colorful Artie, and welcome to a rather unexpected new Let's Play of mine. This is Reader Rabbit's Interactive Math Journey. You might be wondering, why the heck am I Let's Playing this game? Well, this game is one of the most nostalgic games in the world for me. I never owned this, but my local library when I was a young child had this that you could borrow. And I freaking love this game. It's great. I love math and I love the characters and the puzzles. It kind of think of this as Zumbinis, but instead of logic puzzles, it's math puzzles. It's going to be fantastic. And I actually like bought this on eBay for the exquisite purposes of let's playing it. It's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be great. I hope you guys enjoy the ride because uh, I know I will. And I gotta say, the, uh, Tally Cat and Matilda Mouse were much more willing to go on this math journey than I feel like most other kids would. Or it's like, hey, wanna go on a journey where we solve math problems and then meet the math magician? And be like, oh, no, math is like my least favorite subject. Well, math is like my favorite subject. And I actually got a minor in mathematics. So, <laughs> hopefully I'll be smart enough to beat this game. Anyhow, I guess we gotta enter our name first. Oh my gosh, I haven't played this game in decades so <laughs> uh, I'm already yeah. so do we sign in or do we hit start I'm confused oh I think I think we would hit start now let's try it boom we'll start on the math journey spiral and explore while we click look and listen as we follow the path we'll use more and more math and discover the math magician. Click on the flashing star to continue your journey. Okay. Yeah, I remember this map. This is so nostalgic for me. What the heck? Oh, yeah, there's like a spiral. And like the different colors of the spiral correspond to different types of math. So the yellow parts, which are worlds 1 and 6, are for patterns and shapes. The green worlds, which are 2 and 7, are for addition and subtraction. 3 and 8 are for measurement. 4 and 9 are for fractions, and then 5 and 10 are for multiplication. <laughs> and then division is crying in the corner, because apparently they thought that uh, division would be too difficult for ages um, 6 to 9. I was doing division long before I was 9. What is going on here? Alright, maybe they just thought kids wouldn't like division. I don't know. Let's... <laughs> What's with this still image of Matilda Mouse here? Like, or Maddie Mouse? What is going on? Oh, oh man, this is going to be great. Let's go off to World 1. We're off to the land of patchwork patterns. Oh my gosh, the nostalgia. I don't... <laughs> math tale, math exploration, math song. What? Why? 
It's a colonial community. Quite quaint, really. And quiet, too. Something tells me that's about to change. Really? Man, <laughs> I would love to live here. <laughs> Calm and quiet in the colonial area. Oh, man. I totally forgot. So, so you full, full the disclosure. If you want to go back to the map or click on a pop spot to go to an activity. Keep clicking on the pop spots until you've collected all the stars. Okay. As I was trying to say, please don't interrupt me when I am let's playing. I bet they think I'm too stupid to know what to do, what though. What is black and yellow and goes zub zub? The answer is a bee going backwards. Oh, this is not going to go well. <laughs> They're going to constantly interrupt me. Yeah, uh, full disclosure, I don't remember most of this game. I remember a few worlds, but I couldn't tell you what all the, the worlds entail. Can we click on stuff here? You might want to get that looked at, ma'am. I don't think eggs are supposed to do that. Is that the only thing we can click on? Because if I click on the cat, then I go back. Hey, Maddie. Click on the help balloons and I'll read them out loud. Oh, forget that. I know how to read. I know what I'm doing. Okay, so apparently if, if we're supposed to follow the path, we're supposed to do the book exploration for or the book first. Then do the actual math puzzle, then learn about a psalm. I thought we had to do the psalm first. I thought the psalm was like the introduction to the world. No, forget it. We're, we'll just go to the book. I'm a goody two-shoes. Can you help this quilting bee to cut her cards in two? She's having a party for Clara Quayle, whose baby chicks are due. To turn the page and hear my story, click on the page turn arrow. I don't remember this. What the heck? That bee is using too much eyeshadow. <laughs> That quail is spending too much time on her hair in the morning. Oh well. Click on two hives to draw a line across each invitation. Your line should make two matching halves. A symmetrical creation. Oh, I see. They literally just ripped the exact same image of the eyeshadow bee out. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So we got this picture and we've got to make sure that when we cut it in half based on whatever hives we pick that the two halves will be symmetrical. Well, clearly the way to do that is to cut along those two lines. Boom. I'm smart. Then again, this again, this game is this game is made for children ages 6 to 9. I am like almost triple that age. So if I can't do this, it'll be very embarrassing. All right, what's next? Sarah Spider has 8 legs and two wide open eyes. Draw a line diagonally and create two matching sides. They're literally just ripping the exact same image of eyeshadow B for every page. Were they that lazy? I know this was made in 97, which was the year after I was born, but I mean, Mario 64 was out at this point. You could have put in a little more effort. Like, what the heck? Oh no, this one's a little tough. Ooh, now we have to do things diagonally. Also, what does this have to do with math? Nothing. <laughs> this has... This doesn't have anything to do with math. This is... I mean, I guess you could like make a stretch argument that, oh, this is geometry. It's really not. I mean, granted, learning about patterns and like symmetry isn't necessarily for any one given typical school subject, but I don't remember this being part of the math curriculum. This card is for someone who knows her shapes quite well. We'll want her at the party. Who is it? Can you tell? It's a cat. Obviously, no party is complete if you don't have a cat at your party. I suppose I should... I, I could choose what happens if we get it wrong. The party Never mind. Is finally here. Our bee is so excited. All the friends she sees down the road are the ones she had invited. Is, does the bee own this colonial house? I thought this was going to be like George Washington's great, 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 great grandson living here. <laughs> the eligible bachelor with all the cherry trees out front. <laughs> the two that were not cut down. <laughs> but no, apparently it was taken over by this sentient bee who cares too much about her appearance. Yes, yeah, they literally gave... <laughs> they, they put all this effort into putting ta Tally Cat here. Not Tabby Cat. Tally Cat. Oh, because it's a math pun. You get it? Yeah. They put all the effort of making, like, animating Tallycat on this storybook, but they couldn't have more than one still image of 
eyeshadow be? I don't understand this. Oh, I guess... I guess Tally Cat was one of the people who got him... Who got the invite. Sweet. <laughs> oh, man. Tally Cat's the most relatable protagonist ever. She just wants to know what math can do. Like, she's learning it in school and just being like... This is so boring. Like, can is this actually used for anything? And then, like, this random alien thing appears, and it's like, I'm glad you asked. Let's go on a math journey. And she's like, oh, I mean, okay, I didn't have anything better to do on this uh, this uh, Sunday. <laughs> I was going to hang out with my friends, but this sounds more interesting. All right, let's go actually inside the house. Ooh, that was a nice fanfare. We'll surprise Claire Quill Here we go. by making quilts for her baby bird. This is a line of symmetry. It divides the pattern into two equal parts. Pick a fabric shape and drag it to the gray part of the quilt design. Place it so it matches with the other side. Press the space bar if you need to turn the shape. Oh! This is actually getting a little more intricate and complicated. I like this. So we've got to complete the quilt. This, See, this is a bit... Okay, I like this, because the book was kind of like a nice, really bare-bones introduction to symmetry, and now it's like, all right, put it into practice, bro. Yippee! Uh, you're welcome. And we have to hit spacebar to actually change the direction. Yippee! <laughs> I feel like I'm on an episode of Cyber Chase for real right about now. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, I see. The pieces actually replenish. I'm like, oh, are we only going to get to complete one part of the quilt? No, we get to complete more than one part of the quilt. All right. No. That looks... No, that that looks right. Or is is that saying that I'm wrong? How dare they? I am absolutely correct. Right, ribbit. Um, hi, frog. Is that you talking? Well, okay then. Not sure what to make of that. <laughs> Again, I only have vague recollections of this game. I don't even know how much of this game actually happened and how much of this game I actually just dreamed. So that'll be interesting. Yippee! Yippee! Press the space bar if you need to turn the shape. Yep. Right. Yeah, of course I'm right. You dare doubt my math knowledge? Yippee! Yippee! Love the frog's accent. Yippee! Boom! The design is symmetrical. Again. What the? I like the music here. What is the frog doing? Apparently the frog put, like, a stamp pattern on his butt. And that's how he was able to hop that around and put that pattern great. down. Great! Good job! The baby quails with the blankets show how many quilts you've completed. Complete five quilt designs to collect an activity star. Click on your baby yes. quail with the blanket to make your next quilt oh. design. They call them activity, uh, they, they call them activity stars. I call them A pluses and 4.0 GPAs. Boom. All right, so we've got to make, we've got to make a separate quilt for each one of the baby quails. Was it a quail? I don't even remember. I don't even remember what type of bird it is. Oh, this is a this is a cool mini game. It's actually very fun. It's just I don't know how much this has Polygon. to do with math. Rectangle. Boom. Right. Right. <laughs> I love the frog's accent. Polygon. Yep. Yippee. Oh man, yeah. I can see why this Trapezoid. is made for. Kids who actually know how to use the computer properly. Trapezoid. Wow, they're even telling you what the right. shapes are. That's 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 a nice touch. You don't need to know what the shapes are to complete the puzzle, but they tell right. you anyways because it's important. Oh man, Square. this is a good edutainment game. It's it could be hard to make a good edutainment game, but this is a good one. 
I knew there was a reason I liked playing right. this. Also, I'm feeling a little too accomplished considering this right. again made for Ribbit. six to nine. The design is symmetrical. I think this should be made for six plus. I love this crazy like music right now. Although I've noticed that <laughs> there's no music that actually plays when you're making the quilt. I don't know if that's like a Zumbini's kind of thing where they purposefully don't put music in so that way you can concentrate and think better. But I, I personally would have enjoyed music. All right, that's the second quilt down. Um, forget you. We're gonna do it. We're gonna make a quilt for the final quail chick. Again, I don't even know if it's a quail. Rectangle. Right. I've already forgotten. Square. Right. Yep. It right. So, to all the people out there who actually quilt, is this right. what it's like? I, need, I must know. Yippee! Right. The frog is just so excited for us. Rectangle. Right. Yippee! Wait, did it say that was wrong? Rectangle. Oh, that's kind of mean. They have two rectangles that are... Almost exactly the same size, but like they're just ever so slightly different. That's actually kind of mean. <laughs> the design is symmetrical. Yeah, it is. Okay, so who who so A is this colonial house just like a quilt factory? And if so, who owns it? Because clearly Tally Cat doesn't own it, and yet she's kind of like the head honcho here right now. Maybe the frog owns it, but he can't actually put the patterns down, and he's just is like, I hope that I hope enough people go on this special math journey so that they can help me make quilts, so I don't go out of business. <laughs> Darn it! Why don't more people want to go on the math journey? Tally Cat's the only person that I've had come here in like years. <laughs> and then the spider's just like, this is a bad idea. Oh dear! This is okay. This feeds are actually getting a little complicated now. Oh my gosh! Triangle. Triangle. Right. <laughs> Triangle. Oh, yeah. This is, Things are getting a little bit complicated now. Triangle. Now you've got to learn all the ins and oh. outs. Excuse me. That was symmetrical. Oh, wait. No, maybe it wasn't. Try again. All right, you stupid frog. Right. Ribbit. Man, I suck. <laughs> I'm doing bad at this game made for little kids. Yippee. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> let me tell you, young folks, if you want to be able good at this game, you got to know how to make feeds symmetrical that I mess up like five Yippee. times in a row. That's so fantastic. Polygon. Right. Right. All right, let's just... Square. I suppose we should have started with the easy parts, which are just right. doing the squares on the outside. Yippee. I'm also very glad I'm using an optical mouse and not Yippee. my trackpad. Yippee. Yeah, this game right. needs more music. Because the music it does have is really good. I like how it lights up the colors for when you get the spin symmetrical. That's a nice touch. This is a good way to teach kids about symmetry. But again, it's not right. math. Yippee. Right. What kind of a pattern is this? The design is symmetrical. Yeah, but it doesn't look very good. It looks a little better when it's like this, but it still doesn't look that good. Like what kind of, that looks like that looks like a piece of art you'd see at like a modern art museum that I wonder how that got to be in a museum. All right, well, I mean, <laughs> we're he's getting free manual labor from us, so he really can't complain with how bad the designs turn out. All right, last one. Rectangle. We got to we got to make this symmetrical, folks. Eh, come on. Come on, drag it. Drag it, Tally Cat. Why did you Yippee! Okay, this... Yippee! 
Some parts of this pattern are good, and other parts are very clashing. Triangle. This is like teaches us about not just patterns, but also shapes. It's just like they promised. Parallelogram. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right there. Parallelogram. Right there. Yippee! Oh yeah. Oh, we should get Where? the squares in the corners. Yippee! Why? All of these Yippee. different patterns are totally clashing, and it looks awful. Triangle. Right. Right. All right. Now we need. Do we really need another parallelogram there? I didn't think it would fit, but I guess it does. Yippee! Yeah, all of these, all of these patterns Yippee! by themselves look good. When you put them all together, though, it looks terrible. I don't consider myself to be a fashion expert by any stretch of the imagination, but still, this looks awful. Yep. That's what you get when you don't pay your employees a proper wage. Right. Or any wage. <laughs> Glad you agree, Frog. Right, Ribbit. The design is symmetrical. So we've got, like, parts of this pattern are like Minnie Mouse's skirt. No, even from far away, it doesn't look good. I feel bad for the quail chick that gets this pattern. I'm gonna get, like, a comment from, like, a famous that fashion designer. Great. Like, actually, good Artie, job. this design is tray chic. You have Stella bad taste. Job. Whoa! Why did your eyes pop out? That's that's actually a little disconcerting. Click on exit if you need a rest, or keep clicking on the baby quail to choose your own quilt design. Choose your own? What does that mean? Click on your baby quail with the. Oh, it just makes us do it again. Now forget that. We're gonna go out. We got a star! Yes, we screwed up a whole bunch, way more than I should have, but. <laughs> George Washington's house has been turned into a bad quilt shop. I feel so bad for the man's legacy. <laughs> and now, obviously, we can't finish this world until we hear the amazing math song at the end. And I'll be honest, I only really remember one song, but the song I do remember was an absolute banner. So, let's see what this is about. Good start. Like the guitar. That's, that's it? We all, we get a star just for listening to that? Okay, a couple things. One, that was actually pretty... Whoa. Um. Hi, wow. Doctor Who. That math souvenir may help us find the math magician. Really? That did not sound like a good sound when you sat on your children like that. Okay, then. If you want to find the math magician, you need this really ugly quilt yeah. pattern. Let's not tell anyone it's ugly, though. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. This is World 2. Hold on a second. We are not going to World 2 just yet. No, 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 no. We don't... We don't get to go to World 2 just yet. We're doing one world per video. All right. So uh, back to the math song. A couple things. One, that was actually a pretty well-made song. Like, 
The instrumentation was good, and the lyrics actually helped the kids understand, like, what symmetry is. The problem is, why does it make us, why does it want us to do that song after we do the rest of it? I feel like the song you should do first, so you kind of understand what the heck symmetry is from, like, an abstract standpoint. The book then helps you grasp the basics, and then the actual activity is, like, putting it into practice. Which, by the way, is a great way to teach math. You first teach kids about the concept, then you, like, give them a general overview with, like, some very basic, like, practice, and then, like, kind of let them build their skills with more intricate puzzles. And that's what this game does really well, because the, the actual puzzles in this game, I remember being very fun and a great way to actually practice your math. So, highly recommend this to parents trying to teach their kids math. Also, I just want to point out that according to the CD box I got, it is, and I quote, number one in schools. So schools actually got this game quite a bit to help teach their kids math. So if you are out there and you played this game, let me know if you enjoyed it and if it helped you appreciate math more. Or if you're like, this game was about math, so I hate it. <laughs> Both are valid options. <laughs> Anyhow, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'm Colorful Artie. I hope you tune in next time. The first world was kind of lame. I definitely remember the first four worlds very well. And I also remember world nine. I don't remember really any of the other worlds, though. So this will basically be a 50% blind Let's Play. I'll just do, oh, I remember that part. So, Hope you tune in next time. We're going to learn about addition and subtraction, which I feel like everybody needs to know. So look forward to that next time. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless.